Okay, this part talks about indirect acting cholinomimetics. In the previous part, the structure that I was referring about is the acetylcholine and then the prototype of our acetylcholine are the direct acting cholinomimetics. But this time, we will talk about indirect acting. So they have the same action. They mimic cholinergic or they mimic acetylcholine, but they have differences in their pathway or in their act in their mechanism. So this is indirect acting cholinomimetic drugs. So inhibition of your acetylcholinesterase in the cholinergic synapse may result may result in enhanced acetylcholine levels in the synapse. So if we have more acetylcholine, there is there is an increased chances that your acetylcholine can bind to the receptor in the postganglionic um, postganglionic area. Now this this areas may have your muscarinic and nicotinic receptor so if this acetylcholine is not um, it's not deactivated by the acetyl acetylcholinesterase then it can bind to either the muscarinic or the nicotinic receptor that's why it is categorized as cholinomimetic because it can still stimulate the cholinergic nerves but using an indirect acting or doon sa inhibition of acetylcholinesterase, the one that degrades your acetylcholine. So these drugs, these are the taquin, donepezil, and galantamine. So these are common indirect acting cholinomimetics. So, we have also carbamate derivatives, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, which are indirect acting cholinomimetics. So, these are neostigmine, pyridostigmine, and rivastigmine. So, they are referred as suicide inhibitors because they are destroyed in the process covalently modifying our acetylcholinesterase. So just for additional background of our neostigmine and pyridos pyridostigmine, so they have polar nature, um, which, which is coming from the quaternary amine. So this polar nature is not suitable for crossing our blood-brain barrier. So that's why uh, they cannot cross it. They have um, limited actions for, for that matter. Whereas, if, um, for example, our, our rivastigmine or the one uh, mentioned here, dunepezil, um, taquin, and also we have galantamine, they have tertiary amines. So, that tertiary amine um, has lower, uh, lower polarity, so it has ability to penetrate our CNS and it can give it can give um, CNS action so with our acetylcholinesterase inhibitor here they possess quaternary amine um, that that's why their their action focus focuses or their their innervation are mostly on the internal organs in our muscarinic stimulation in our smooth muscle so mostly it improve um, GI motility for example uh, after surgery that uh, that needs to facilitate yung ating mga mga na move na internal organs upon uh, opening our uh, upon opening the body body cavity during surgery so yon quaternary ag uh, again your your carbamate derivatives contain quaternary amines now let's move forward to 
the different modifications we can do to our um, different parts of acetylcholine. If you can remember, we have omium group, we have ethylene bridge, and we have the acyl group. So for cholinomimetic, indirect acting, these are the things that you have to remember in the structure activity relationship. So first, our primary, secondary, and tertiary amines, they are less active over our quaternary amine. So it is favorable to have quaternary amines. For example, drugs such as metacholine, bethanicol, carbacol, and muscarine. So for this section, this segment, I want you to look for the structures of metacholine, betanicol, carbacol, and muscarine if you can identify the part of the quaternary amine that it possesses. Now, if methyl group is replaced, if the methyl group in your omium part is replaced by ethyl or larger group, larger alkyl group, it inactivates our compound. So it is unfavorable for our cholinomimetic action. While substitution of all three methyl groups with higher alkyl groups like ethyl make the molecule becomes an antagonist. So it's other way around. It can become antagonist of our cholinergic receptor. So it will be unfavorable as cholinomimetic. Now, the replacement of nitrogen, aside from sulfur and phosphorus that was mentioned prior, replacement of nitrogen by arsenic and antimony and phosphorus or sulfur can also produce less active compounds. Now, with regards to the middle part of our structure, which is the ethylene bridge, there are modifications that needs to be remembered. So, if you have two carbons in your ethylene bridge, that is the optimum requirement. So, if you can re remember the previous section, it should not be more than five carbons. Replacement of hydrogens in methyl group with methyl group leads to equal or greater cholinergic activity but larger than or higher number of carbon so for example yung methyl gawin mong ethyl or propyl it will also decrease the activity so substitution of methyl group at beta carbon acts selectivity on muscarinic receptor and if there is substitution in the methyl group at alpha carbon, it will have a selectivity on nicotinic receptor. So, di ba dalawang carbon meron sa bridge? Now, the alpha carbon, if you will attach alkyl group on your alpha carbon, it will have a nicotinic receptor affinity or selectivity. While if you will replace or not to replace, but if you will substitute the methyl or the other carbon, which is in the beta position, your affinity or the acetylcholine will be more attracted to the muscarinic receptor. Now, for this part, another activity that will I that I want you to do is to look for one example for a drug that is more selective to muscarinic receptor and a drug that is more selective to nicotinic receptor and check for the presence of the substitution in their respective carbon for carbon alpha and carbon beta. Now, on the third part of your structure, which is called the acyl group, so these are the things that you have to remember to make your drug a cholinomimetic indirect acting. So when methyl group in your acyl or on the, on the acetyl part is substituted with primary amine or pag yung methyl group doon, 
pinalitan siya ng may nitrogen, it will result into a more potent compound such as the carbocol and botanical. And then if ester functional group is substituted with ether or ketone, it will also produce a more potent compound. And substitution naman of acyl with aromatic or higher molecular weight esters will provide antagonistic activity, which means unfavorable for our indirect acting cholinomimetic. So it will be the other way around. So you have to avoid, if you want to produce an indirect acting cholinomimetic activity, you have to avoid replacing the acyl group or you have to avoid substituting the acyl group with bulky structures such as aromatic structures and higher molecular weight esters. So that would be all for indirect acting cholinomimetics.